Hi, this is Irv Shapiro with Make With Tech, where we learn how to use desktop technologies to make things, to create, to innovate. Today, for those of you involved in 3D printing, I'm going to change your perspective. Most of us probably think of a slicer as the piece of software that we use to convert a 3D image into G code, into a series of layers, commands to a 3D printer, so it can be printed. I'm going to show you today how to use a slicer as a design tool to make beautiful coasters um, of a variety of shapes with a variety of patterns. But more importantly, I'm going to help you better understand what the top and bottom layer parameters in Cura are used for and how those relate with the fill parameters. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, today's video is a continuation of a series of more advanced videos about slicers. I'm beginning with Cura. If you're new to 3D printing, make sure you look at for the playlists up in the corner of this video, which will help you with introductory material about 3D printing, 3D design, using slicers, using CAD systems, different types of filament. And to make sure that you hear about new videos as they come out, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. And as always, you can share these videos with anyone you'd like. Now, let's talk a little bit about top and bottom layers and infill. So I have a model here. And uh, I took this model, which is called a calibration cap, model I use a lot. This was printed, I think, at two or three hundred percent, so it's a bit bigger. And I took it to a bandsaw and I cut it open. And I cut it open because I wanted to really make sure I understood what the various parameters in Cura are that influence the top of the model, the bottom of the model, the sides of the model, and the infill of the model. And then I've taken and drawn that up so that we can use it to ensure that we all understand the vocabulary together. So let's look at this screen together. Now, when you look at this picture, you need to make sure you understand what it is. In essence, it's a cube that I've sliced vertically, and then we're looking at that slice from the top down. So I've sliced it vertically, and in essence, we're looking here at the side, but I've turned it sideways. So let's look at it and understand the color codes. The pink line on the top is called the skin. Now the skin is very important because you can set different parameters in Cura for how the skin is printed versus the other top and bottom layers. And you do that because you might want to print the skin more slowly or with a different pattern to improve the quality of your print. Now you'll notice in this diagram that there's skin here on the top, but there's also skin over this gap. So if you have a notch or gap in your model, there is also going to be skin over the top of that gap. The green lines here are the walls or the lines making up the walls. So in Curie, you specify a wall width. In a video last week, I went through that in detail. Walls are made of lines. The outermost wall is called the outer line wall and the innermost line are the inner walls or the inner lines. The hatched area here is the infill. And there are parameters in Cura for specifying 
the width of each of these components, the nature of this infill, and even whether these lines at the top of the infill get connected together or they sort of just touch up to the walls, the top, and the bottom. Okay, now let's turn to Cura. Now that we have a general understanding of the vocabulary, top, bottom, skin, walls made up of lines, outer lines or outer walls, and inner walls, and infill. Let's turn to Cura and take a look. Now you can see here that I'm using Cura 4.11.0. It's uh, the most recent version as of the filming of this video. One of the things I'm very impressed of with Cura is that there seems to be a new release almost every 30 to 60 days nowadays. It's a piece of software that's evolving rapidly. One caveat is for Mac users, if you're on the new M1 Macs, it is running in compatibility mode, and there are some limitations. Okay, now let's go ahead and load a model, slice a model, and look at the same vocabulary on the screen here. But before we do that, I want you to click on the hamburger menu over here and select all. That will ensure that you can see every parameter that's available. Now, generally, you may not want to do that. It might be overwhelming, but we're going to go through in detail many of the parameters for top and bottom layers and for fill. So I'm going to open up a model here. I'm going to open up one of our coaster models. That's the model you see right here. But in this case, you can see the infill, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm going to slice that model. I'm going to go to preview. You can see here, if we zoom in, we have a red outer wall, a green inner wall, and then a top layer. Now, why is it configured like that? Well, if we go to quality, we'll see that our line width is 0.4 millimeters. We go to walls, we'll see our wall width is 0.8 millimeters. That gives us two walls. There is only one outer wall, and then the other walls are inner walls. So with two walls, we have one outer wall, one inner wall, and then a top layer. Below the top layer, I have infill. Now, how do I define how many of these top layers exist? Well, you define the thickness of the top layer. You divide that by the layer height. So for walls, you define the thickness and divide it by lines. For top and bottom layers, you define the thickness and divide it by the layer height. Since the layer height for this model is set at 0.2 millimeters, I'm going to end up with four layers on the top and the bottom. One, two, three, four, and then we have our infill. We can define bottom layers separately. Now, why would you want more layers on the top or the bottom? Well, if you don't have enough layers on the top or the bottom, you'll be able to see your infill when you look through your model. Now, one caveat is that the top and bottom layers have a different print speed than the rest of your model. So they could be slow, but that's where we're going to look at skin. And now while you can't see it in the diagram, we know from the parameters here, there are two skin layers. So the top two layers are going to be skin. And if we scroll down here to speed, all the way down here, you'll see that we can define separate speeds for the top and bottom layers and the skin layer. Now in this particular case, they're set the same but let's actually make the skin layer much slower. We'll set it at 20 millimeters per second. We'll slice this. Now we'll change the coloring to speed. So you'll see this top layer is blue. We go down one, two layers, and you'll see it's now green. And that's because we've defined the top two layers as printing much slower 
than the bottom layers. And you can see here on this diagram that blue is 20 millimeters per second. It ends up green is 40 millimeters per second. Orange would be 80 millimeters per second. So if we keep going down, we'll see the infill is printing at 80 millimeters per second. Now, what if I set the skin to zero and the top and bottom to zero and then slice our model? Now, the orange is telling you that Cura thinks that might not be a great idea. So we need to know what we're doing. We know what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and slice this model. And now you'll see at the very top, there's no skin. And at the very bottom, there's no skin. So what I've done is I've created a coaster with a design in the middle. Now, how do I indicate what design I'm looking for? Well, I go down here to infill and I select the design pattern. So if I set it to grid and slice my model, we'll see that we end up with something and I didn't actually print, oh, here we go. Here's a grid model. And I'll show you a close up of this because it's actually fascinating. Now I would encourage you to go to infill and to play around with the infill pattern. Now you'll see here that it looks like these lines are forming a crosshatch. But in essence, if we go all the way down to the bottom, we'll see there's a single direction for each line and they switch each layer. That's the default for the line infill, but we can change that. And the way you change that is you go to this parameter here and you put in a list of directions. If I put in one direction, just 90 degrees, all of the lines will be in the same direction. If I put in 90 and then 135, we'll see that we form a grid. And I can even put in additional directions here to make that grid more complex. So if I'm using this for design, I have a lot of flexibility in how my infill will actually work. Now, if I put it back to just open brackets like that, that's the default. Now, just as I have the ability to define the pattern used for infill, I have the ability to define the pattern used for the top and bottom of our model. So let's put it back to a 0.8 millimeter top. I'm going to slice this. Let's go and change the layer view to be line type. And there we see our top layer. And if we zoom in here, we'll see its lines right now. Now I could change that top line layer to be concentric instead. And now it's a series of circles. And I could zoom in here and we'll see that it's a series of circles. And there's another parameter here called connect top bottom polygons. If I select that, we'll see the circles are all now connected together. Now, this may make it stronger, but I don't think it actually looks very good when we end up doing that. So I generally leave this off. Now, there is a similar parameter for infill. So let's say we're using lines and we say connect infill lines. You'll see here now on the corners, on the edges, all of the infill lines are connected together. Okay, now let's go back to top and bottom and look at some of the other parameters. We already defined what skin was, top and bottom thickness we've defined. 
We can define the pattern. We looked at that. Now, no skin in Z gaps. This is called a Z gap. Ironing is a capability in Cura. It's also available in other slicers where for the very top layer of your model, it says go over that layer with a hot nozzle that's extruding very little or no filament. So it's sort of like ironing a sheet. You're ironing the top of your model. Um, that can be very effective. It's slow, but it can be very effective in smoothing the top of a model. These various skin parameters that come next all define that very top layer. Now this next parameter is very important and it's new. And what this next parameter does is it tells the slicer to generate G-code that will attempt to print the top and bottom layers very consistently going side to side. Instead of optimizing how they're printed to reduce time, it will attempt to go in the same direction over and over again. Now, in a simple model like these coasters, it's not going to make a difference. But if in a more complex model with a more complex top, ensuring the lines go in one direction only will make the model look much better. Well, folks, I hope we had some fun today. We learned something. We learned that you can create very, very interesting models by just telling your slicer to exclude the top and bottom layers. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to print vase style prints that print almost as fast as vase mode, but are much stronger by combining the vase mode characteristics which is that you print just the walls with no infill and you go in a consistent way around your model by combining those characteristics in a way that doesn't rely on native base mode. So folks, I hope we learned something together and make sure you subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, go to forum that make with tech.com to discuss this and other videos on the channel and let's continue to learn things together.